<laughs> the red phone rings in the emergency department. It's a hotline from ambulance control straight into the resuscitation room. And yes, it actually is red. A nurse takes down the essential details on a pro forma and rushes through to pediatric A&E to relay the headlines. 15-year-old stabbing, wounds to chest and abdomen, ETA, 10 minutes. She gives us the heart rate, it's too fast. The blood pressure, it's just about holding steady. We put out a trauma call to assemble the emergency team with all the life-saving skills this young person needs. This is my team, and we're preparing to receive this critically injured young man. My name's Becky. I work in the emergency department, and I'm there in the moments that change people's lives. There's a frenetic kind of excitement about being part of this team that's at the cutting edge of medicine, pushing the boundaries of care, saving lives that few other teams can. In this room, experts in their field are at their best, dealing with life and death. This is the stuff of drama. Grey's Anatomy, stand aside. <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> the adrenaline junkies among us get a regular fix in this space and I'm here for it. <laughs> but there's this other part of me, the part that's not about adrenaline. It's about compassion and care. As a nurse and a mother working in paediatric ED, it's maternal, it's nurturing, and it's protective. It's the human in me. This part of me listens to 15-year-old stabbing and hears child. Because that's what he is. A child who needs care. When the door opens, my first glance of him tells me he's in trouble. He has multiple stab wounds. Without urgent medical intervention, he won't survive. He's riding the wave of a huge adrenaline rush with all the bravado that brings. He's cocky and he's brash. I tell him my name and I say, I'm here for you. I know you must be terrified, but you're safe now. We've got you. I'm looking around the room to see who's there with him from a family or a personal perspective. But there's no one. So I stay beside him near the top of the bed. As the team do their thing, the level of urgency is clear. I see realisation dawn as he looks around him at the number of people working on him the equipment involved, the speed, everything is happening. The bravado starts to unravel to reveal a frightened boy, a vulnerable child. Because 15-year-olds are children. And children need their mums. And now he asks me, where's my mum? I knew this moment would come. It always does. But his mum's not here. I'm all he has right now. Someone else's mum. We give him some pain relief and some sedation, ready for the painful procedure of putting in a chest tube. I try to take his mind off things. We talk about music. My kids are a similar age, and I think about our shared Spotify playlists, and I try not to sound too uncool as we chat. 
the chest tube starts to drain blood and air. It's working. He starts to feel a bit more comfortable, and he looks at me and says, thank you for staying with me. Please don't leave. I'm not going anywhere, I tell him. I'm with you for the duration. And then a moment of silence. And he looks at me and says, I love you. And I'm lost for words, which is something that isn't really a thing for me. I don't really know what to say. I put my hand on his arm and I say, thank you. That's a lovely thing to say, but it feels awkward. It's not enough. No, he blurts. Say it back. <laughs> There's a few sniggers from around the bed and some general embarrassment. Someone says, oh, maybe it's just the drugs talking. And then there's silence as they're all wondering how I'll respond. <laughs> I take his hand. I look him in the eye. And I say, I love you too. People might say I lied to him. Maybe you think I was wrong. Maybe this doesn't compute with your version of a healthcare professional's values and behaviours. For me, this isn't about truth and lies, right and wrong. This is about love and compassion. Maslow described our need for love and connection as a basic human requirement. It's not about romance. It doesn't supersede family. It's about acceptance and belonging. Nursing requires compassion and empathy, creating a bond with people we barely know. But sometimes honesty and compassion can be at odds with each other. The sniggers from my colleagues are a testament to how awkward this can be for professionals at times. But this is about me bringing my love and compassion for my patients, my experience as a nurse, a mother, a human to bear on my interaction with this child in front of me. This version of love is not something to be sniggered at. It's about connection, a bond that I believe can get you and your patients through critical, intense moments. We know that our patients have a deep desire for compassion and connection. We also know that compassion has positive benefits for the person being compassionate. Compassion is a gift for the giver as well as the receiver. In order to make this connection with my patients, I need to bring all of who I am to work. Just as my nursing knowledge doesn't go away when I'm at home, my experience as a mum, a wife, a daughter, a friend, doesn't get hung up in my locker when I arrive on shift. Each of our patients has a unique backstory, the experiences that make them who they are. So do we. My experiences and my backstory come to bear on my interactions with every patient I meet. In these moments, our stories collide and we share a chapter together. 
In our world of healthcare, some of these chapters are very short, but no less important for their brevity. Each one has the potential to be a pivotal moment in our respective stories, a transition from before to after. I shared a chapter with this 15-year-old boy. Each one of you would have connected with him in a different way, based on who you are, your backstory, and the parts of you that don't get hung up in your locker. Maybe it's time to think about how you walk with others when your stories collide. Perhaps you need to give yourself permission to bring all of who you are to each interaction, to acknowledge your backstory and theirs in the moment. How will you show up to give and receive the gifts of compassion and meaningful connection? In the moments that change people's lives, from the beginning to the end of our chapter together, I will always bring all of me.